In this video, I'm going to do one machine learning model which is related to brain stroke prediction. This project data is not that much hard to process because the data set is very simple to operate. I think it will be a good starter project for you if you are a beginner in data science. So why I did this project means I just want to show you the different classification algorithm performances and ensemble performances respectively on this data set. So stick with me till the end of this video to know the performance of my code and optimizations. Before starting this video, do like, share, comment and subscribe to support your creator. It helps me to motivate and it will bring you more new videos in data science. Let's get started. One more update is also there. We saw a lot of different machine learning approaches and project explanations related to machine learning from beginner to intermediate level in this channel. So I'm planning to take this channel more towards the data cloud operations. I think you know about the popular cloud services such as Amazon Web Services and Azure and GCP. I'm going to make machine learning tutorials with high level cloud integrations. So why I take this initiative means all the machine learning developments and deployments are mostly happening in either one of the above cloud. The industry is highly dependent on the cloud ecosystem. In the upcoming tutorials, you will see a lot of cloud integration and deployment videos in machine learning. Don't miss the upcoming contents. We enough saw basic machine learning implementations. And if you want to upskill yourself in machine learning, definitely you need cloud ecosystem. Okay, so let's start the video. In the first cell, I wrote the code for reading my data set. As I told you before, this data set is not that much complex. We have few set of categorical variables to operate here. But once we pull some insights from this data, we will change those categorical variables into numericals. Now you can see the data here. Just go through all the columns. You will get the explanations of each one of the column. The columns here are pretty familiar to you. So there is no problem here to understand the data set. So in this data set, we have 10 features except the stroke column. Stroke column is our target column. We are going to predict the output of stroke column in the final. After this step, I just called describe function on my dataset variable to know the underlying statistics of the dataset. So these are the statistic results. These are just basic ones. It is not actual insights. The special thing about this project is I used only less number of graph visualizations on this dataset. Mainly I wrote this code which will give you straightforward answers on our data. You will see a lot of numbers rather than high appealing visualizations in this project. So let's get started. In the first insight, I'm going to pull the data proportions based on the gender ratio. So look at the pie chart here. 58% stroke data are male data and remaining stroke data are females. There is more male data in this data set. In the second insight, I'm going to take how many people are affected overall in this data set. To collect those insight, I wrote a code here. First, I explained the code in a stepwise manner. You guys can easily able to get it properly. In the first step, I declared one variable called stroke. Actually, it is a list. Our motto is to find the overall people ratio who are affected by stroke. In the list, I pass the value 1. 1 means people are affected by stroke and 0 means people are not affected by stroke. After that, I declared another list called gender. It contains male and female labels. So by using this, we can able to collect the individual insights from this overall data ratio. Next, I called one variable called people who are affected by stroke. In this variable, I pass my main data frame combined with the list variables. So it will filter the stroke data separately from the main data. Next, I declared another variable called males and females. If you look at the logic carefully, you understand both are same code. In the male variable, I set the general value as zero. So it will track the male records from the stroke affected data set. And in the female variable, I set the gender value as one. It will track the female records from the stroke affected data set. So this is how you have to write the optimized code. If your code is sufficient and meaningful, you can pull more hidden insight from any data set. So all you need is experience in writing the pandas code and logical understanding of data. So this will play an important factor in your data science career. I followed this exact code approach on collecting the smoking status and marriage status. If you understand this single code piece, you can able to reuse the code for your convenient. I will share this code link in the description. So if you want any reference of my code, you can go and check my GitHub to understand my code better. Okay. And if you are a beginner, I know it is hard for you to understand this query, but you should have to understand this type of query in pandas. Then only you can write some efficient pandas logic in Python. Okay. So let's move to the next step. Next step is to process the categorical variables. I imported a pre-processing function from sklearn and then I called label encoder to encode my categorical variables into numerical ones. See my code, there are around five categorical variables are there. I wrote the code for label conversion here. So once I executed the code, you will see the numbers which are equivalent to the categorical values in the columns. So look at the result. You can see the equivalent numbers of the categorical variables. So this is our final data set. We are going to apply more algorithms on this data set to extract the information that we required. Let's move to the machine learning modeling part. In the first cell of machine learning modeling, I created two variables X and Y, and then I split in my data set into 30-70 ratio. First, I'm going to apply my data on random forest classifier. 
So let's run the random forest code. The random forest results are showing up uh, 0.96 accuracy. I think it is pretty good. Let's check the overfitting and underfitting issues. So in the training I got 0.94 and in the testing I got 0.95. So this model is clearly neither overfit nor underfit. And if you want to understand the overfitting and underfitting concept, I created a separate video for you. So you guys can easily get the knowledge of those concepts. Okay. So this is the end of random forest classifier results. After this algorithm, I just moved my ML model into further procedures such as applying the data on different models. Uh, I choose three models here, Gaussian A-based, logistic regression and decision tree. Let's run the Ansible model one by one. So see here, I got some numbers from the ensemble models. Looks like there is a bit of drop in ensemble approaches compared to the standalone models. I expected this because, uh, because I plan to pre-process the data more. There are some underlying insights are there. Uh, maybe if I add those things, the ensemble approach would be beneficial for us. So in this notebook, we tried different approaches and modeling overall, but the standalone model performances are good compared to the ensemble one. But if we improve the data more, we will get some standard model than the current one. First, you have to understand that the machine learning models are always trial and error types. You should have to implement more and more different approaches to fine tune the data that you have. I just want to finish this video here. I hope you understand something about ML model developments. See you on next another video.